Hello everyone, welcome to SharePoint Journey. This is Devendra Viligandla. In this lesson, we will learn what are solutions in SharePoint 2010 and what are the types of solutions which are available. There are two types of solutions which are available in SharePoint 2010 development. One is form solution, the other one is sandbox solution. And these solution files can be packaged as WSP packages, okay, WSP files. And we'll see what is manifest.xml file and what is the importance of manifest.xml file, how it will get will be used while developing these solutions. Okay. Next is form solution. Using form solution, you can develop artifacts at all scopes. We have seen in while uh, going through the feature session, what is the scope and what are the types of scopes basically we have four types of scopes web site web application and form level scopes so at all levels you can develop solutions which are form type and these form solutions will be hosted in IAS worker process this will be run with the help of W3WP process okay and we call these solutions as full trust solutions because the components which are deployed can have a full access even we can run these solutions using run it run with elevated privileges as well okay and because these solutions are form level solutions and these solutions need to be installed by the form administrators and those solutions can be installed from the central administration and central administration will be have access to form admins and once you deploy all the solutions these solutions will get deployed to the solution store okay and these solutions will use the the resources of the servers and you can't set any throttling for each and every solution so if you deploy 10 solutions all 10 solutions will use the server resources accordingly okay the next one is sandbox solution which has been introduced in SharePoint 2010 which was not there in March 2007 sandbox solutions can be applicable only till a site collection level so till site collection level means the scope is limited to only web and site level and these solutions will run under user code process okay so which is a separate process which has been introduced in SharePoint 2010 so it will not have entire effect on the server okay and you can't use run with elevated privileges in sandbox solutions okay because it's not running under IAS worker process and you can't delegate the uh, permissions to do some operations with the uh, normal user and the good thing is you don't need to depend on uh, form administrator to deploy these solutions it can be done using site collection administrator itself because they have introduced one new solutions gallery at site collection level so all those solutions can be deployed to solution gallery and the best thing here is with the sandbox solutions resource throttling can be set for each and every solution okay at uh, site collection level so there are few limitations with the sandbox solutions because whenever you develop a solution which will be at a site collection level so that will go and sit in the database so you can't uh, develop application pages whenever you want to develop an application pages those pages will go and sit in the layout folders so that is not possible with sandbox solutions and if you go to timer job service applications and all these two are at higher level scopes which are form level which cannot be done at site collection level and visual web parts you develop using user controls again user controls will go and sit in the layouts folders so these are the few limitations which you have in sandbox solutions okay and manifest.xml file whenever you are developing a solution this is the important file okay it says what are the components that will go through along with this particular solution if you see this example here 
this is the one of the example where one of the assembly is getting deployed to the global assembly cache and the assembly name is site columns dot dll and it is having one more feature okay which is a folder site columns and this is the feature dot xml which will get deployed to the root folder so this will help what are the files which we are going to deploy and each WSP package will be defined by a solution ID okay that will be mentioned in the manifest.xml so we will see a demo how to uh, build and develop or develop those solutions in SharePoint 2010 and deploy them using Visual Studio 2010 and we will see what is uh, solution store and solution gallery how the form solution can be built and sandbox solutions also okay let's go ahead and open the visual studio to create a new project go to file click on new click on project and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose SharePoint 2010 empty project and I'll name this as form solution first we'll create the form solution and click OK and if you see here it will ask for the site which you want to use for debugging I'm going to not going to touch this one so I'm going to keep SharePoint journey as the site which I'm going to use and what is the trust level for this SharePoint solution you have two options here one is you can deploy as a sandbox solution or you can deploy as a form solution so by default Microsoft is suggesting to develop a sandbox solutions in SharePoint 2010 okay so in this case I'm going to choose a form solution okay and I click on finish so it's creating the project it has created the project okay now if I go to the properties okay here assembly deployment target is global assembly catchy okay now I just add one feature just for testing okay So I'm adding the feature. The feature has been added. I'm not going to change anything here. So what I'm going to do is using CKS development tools for Visual Studio, I'm going to package or create a package for this particular solution. So click on package all SharePoint projects and we'll you can see here status package succeed you can see the same thing in output window so which we can find under form solutions bin debug form solution dot wsp so what I'll do is I'll open this solution in file explorer okay and I'll go to bin debug you can see here a wsp package has been created so any solution will get packaged as wsp file if you want to see the details about this you copy this file okay keep it here and rename it as a cap click s and extract these files here okay form solution and you can see here you have manifest.xml file which has been generated okay and let's open and see what exactly manifest.xml file is having here you can see it is having a solution ID which is a GUID and what is the SharePoint version and this solution is having a DLL and the deployment target is to GAC and I have added a feature to just show you the reference and this will also get deployed using manifest.xml file okay. let's right click and click on deploy and keep an eye on output window what happens here so in case of form solution okay it's adding the solution and retraction didn't happen because this solution is not available before and it's deploying the feature and it's activated the feature so this is the process it happens when you deploy a solution okay now let's go ahead and open the central admin and to see where exactly it has been deployed we have seen in the slide saying that it will get deployed to the solution store 
where is that solution stored from the central administration okay click on system settings and you can see here under form management you can see manage form solutions you can deploy retract solution packages across the form so click on that here you can see the form solution dot WSP has been deployed this is the solution store so click on that for more details you can see it's a core solution so deployment server type is front-end server it will get deployed to all front-end servers okay deployment status deploy deploy to globally that means it has been deployed to all web applications so when was the last operation time okay so you can retract the solution from the solution store as well now let's say that you made some modifications to the feature okay and just changing the title now and you want to redeploy the solution so now we have the solution which is already available in the solution store if I redeploy it what is going to happen let's see I clicked on deploy again keep an eye on output window now you can see here it's recycling the IIS application pool so the form solution depends on IIS worker process okay it's recycling that particular application pool and the solution is already available so it has retracting the solution so before retracting retracting the solution we have the feature so that need to be deactivated and once it has been deactivated it has retracted the solution and deleted the solution added the solution back again and deploy that solution and finally it has activated the respective feature okay now let's close this project now we'll create a new solution for the sandbox so to create a new project file new click on project and again I'm going to choose SharePoint 2010 empty project here I'm going to name it as sandbox solution click OK so here if you see here I'm going to deploy this one as a sandbox solution click on finish okay if I go to the properties you can see here this is the property which will differentiate whether it's a sandbox solution or not so if it says true it's a sandbox solution okay now for, for example I'm gonna add one feature I'm going to name this one as site level feature let's go ahead and deploy it and keep an eye on output window you can see here application pool recycle because sandbox solution is <laughs> it's skipping the application pool recycle okay and same no package is available so it's keeping the retraction and it's added the solution deployed the solution and activating the feature okay let's go ahead and see where we can find this as I said this will be available in the solution gallery of the site collection and this is our site collection to go to solution gallery click on site actions site settings okay just wait for a moment to pick up this so you can see here under galleries you have solutions okay click on that so this is the one of the gallery where you will have all the sandbox solutions which has been placed okay you can see here that sandbox solution name and when it has been deployed what is the status which has been activated and what is the usage of this particular solution so that is the important thing with respect to sandbox solutions so if it is exceeded the limits then this sandbox solution will not be available for the entire site collection okay so you can deactivate using deactivate option so if you have a WSP package then you can upload the WSP package directly from this gallery itself that is the advantage of sandbox solution now I want to deploy a component which is more than site collection level let's say web application level so as I said sandbox solutions are applicable only for site collection so now I changed a feature with web application scope 
and if I try to deploy this let's see what is gonna happen go to output window now it's retracting the feature okay you can see here error occurred in deployment step adding the solution okay it's a web application scope and cannot be added to site site means site scope means site collection so and even the same case with the form level so you can't deploy the artifacts which are above the site collection level with sandbox solution so that is one thing which we need to keep in mind so if I keep back again with the site collection level if I try to deploy it if I go back and see the output window see it's keeping the application pool recycle because it's a sandbox solution it is working under user code solution and it has deleted the solution added back and deployed the solution activated the feature and if I refresh the solution gallery what are the changes which are there it will be available you can see here we haven't done app pool recycle so even after installing it the site has been up immediately so it's not affecting any other site collections on the entire form it will have effect on only this particular site collection so in this lesson so far we have seen how to uh, build and develop different types of solutions and we have seen what is form level solution and what is sandbox solution what are the limitations of sandbox solutions and what, what are the advantages why it has been introduced the sandbox solutions in SharePoint 2010 thank you for watching this session we'll see you in next lesson